Making the move from junior developer to senior developer isn't just about technical prowess, it's also about management, and in particular, self-management, and the ability to set technical priorities. So the next time you're in a meeting where they talk about what do we do next as a development team in terms of our tech debt, you will have some answers. So what I'm gonna do in this video is give you some ideas for technical priorities in that junior to senior development range for web developers, and of course, give you some hints about how to get those onto your team in your next standup or bug triage. Let's get right into it. Hi, I'm Jack Harrington. I'm a principal full stack software engineer, and I've held that title at multiple Fortune 500 e-commerce companies, as well as high traffic volume social network sites. And most of my technical priorities in this range are around keeping the sites stable and up, and also keeping my teams happy and productive. So my first priority is to fix prod, which is great because that's also the company's top priority. Obviously a site that's not in production is not making any money and it's not making our customers happy. So the top priority thing is to get it back and up and online. And although in the DM it says all hands on deck, normally that's usually you know four to five people that are on that fire team. And you might not be part of that. As a junior engineer on a tangential team, you might just be working on unrelated features. And if that's the case, then just keep on doing what you're doing. It doesn't really impact you. But if you're on a team where you have had some recent releases, you're gonna wanna be on call so that if that team needs you to answer questions about what your release was and how it could possibly have impacted the situation, then be sure to give succinct and accurate information to describe that. But of course, those four to five people are under some serious stress. So it's important to kind of keep out of their way. But what you can do is look at what they're working on and come up with some recommendations because there will be a meeting after that incident to talk about how to mitigate this in the future, what architectural changes can we make to make the site more resilient. And if you have some ideas as to how that's gonna happen, you're gonna be in a much better position. My second priority is to save any drowning coworkers. At any experience level, you can pull a bug or a feature off of the list that you think is gonna take a half day and ends up taking three to four days and you're stressed out. And at that point, you're underwater. And so if you see a teammate that is in that position and you think it can help, then offer your assistance. Say, hey, can we pair program on this so I can get you unstuck? That's not just gonna help the team, it's also gonna make you look like a great team player, which you are. My third technical priority is always to fix any blockers. So what do we ask during Agile? We ask, what did you do yesterday? What are you doing today? And are you blocked? That's because it's really important. If you're blocked, then you're not gonna be able to be productive. So if you're the person that's doing the blocking, if you have, for example, an API that you need to give this other person and they can't work until you have it, then you need to come up with some creative solutions today to get that person unblocked. And if you're not the person who's either blocked or blocking, and you have some ideas about how to unblock that, again, that's the kind of thing that you can present during the standup and show that you are a team player who's committed to the whole team working well. My fourth technical priority that I put before bugs and features is to fix the build. Main should always build and have no unit test failures. But it's more than just that. You wanna keep those builds really lean like in the 10 to 15 minute range at the maximum end. If you've got a build that's taking two to three hours, I would consider that broken because what it's doing is it's breaking the cadence of the team. And it means that the PRs that you're gonna put into that code base are necessarily gonna be much larger than you would if you had a 10 to 15 minute build. And what happens is when you have a production incident, you need to go through these heavyweight PRs that have all kinds of stuff to try and figure out what was going on. What you want is you want really small atomic PRs that you can roll back really quickly and a build system that works really quickly. And when you talk about this during your tech debt meetings, be sure to present that in a way where it matches up with keeping the site stable. My fifth technical priority might seem a little bit out of left field, but it's to remove any errors and reduce the number of warnings in the production consoles and logs. And this is really important and it gets back to keeping the site stable and running. If we have a Sev0 or a P1 incident and we're trying desperately to figure out what's wrong with the site, 
we don't want to have to go through a bunch of errors and try and figure out what's the new error from the stack of existing errors. You want to keep it where when the site goes down, if there are errors in the console, then that error is the problem. And in order to get there, you need to make sure that your site always runs with zero errors and as few warnings as possible. All right, well, I hope this gives you some ideas about tactical, technical priorities in the kind of junior to senior range. If you have any comments or ideas of your own, be sure to put that in the comments section down below. In the meantime, of course, if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.